Perfect. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the DIA and the AGM Christmas event, the print webinar, the print summit webinar, my apologies. Welcome to our members and guests. My name is Stephen Longmire, and I'm this year's president of the Digital Imaging Association. Because of the global pandemic, we've opted to continue to hold our meetings, but in a virtual format with our fifth webinar today. The two key mandates of the Digital Imaging Association are to provide education and networking opportunities for our members. At this time, unfortunately, we have to forgo the networking for everyone's safety. But I hope you find the educational aspect worthwhile and we look forward to your feedback. Our membership is comprised of pre-press, printers, packaging converters, designers, advertisers, print buyers, equipment and consumer manufacturers, as well as vendors. If you're with us as a guest today, please consider joining the Digital Imaging Association. Today's session is an example of the high caliber of meetings that we run. And if you'd like more information on membership, please contact either myself or Mark McLeod at 416-254-4941 or Marg, M-A-R-G, at digitalimagingassociation.com. Like most trade associations today, financial stability does not come from membership revenues alone. And so we turn to the vendors and suppliers to support our goals as an association. We're honored to continue to receive the support and recognition of the DIA's contrib contribution to the growth and development of the graphic imaging science industry from the following companies. Our platinum sponsors are Canon, EFI, HP, Konica Minolta, and Spicers. Yay! <laughs> Our gold sponsors <laughs> are Adobe, Fujifilm, Graphics Canada, and Heidelberg. Please consider these companies Yay. and their demonstrated support of the industry when making your purchasing decisions. Technology for this webinar today has been graciously provided by HP. <laughs> <laughs> got a raving fan with Warren over here. Got to give credit where due. Exactly. Yeah. Part of today's webinar constitutes the DIA's annual general meeting. And as such, we need to conduct some corporate business as well. I'd like to introduce the 2021 board of directors on behalf of the membership. I accept this board of directors as nominated and the year end financials as approved. Our officers, co-past presidents, Paul McCarthy, HP, and Ed Rooney. President, Stephen Longmire, Sydney Stone. Our secretary treasurer is Mark Norlock from Canon. Our first vice president is Paul Tavirdas from TS4 to SU4. And our second vice president is Maria Angelites from Spicers. Our directors are Ray Fagan, Heidelberg, Jason Fubert, Marquis, Jason Hamilton, Agfa, and Deanne Sinclair, Cambridge Labels. All as well, uh, Dino Sin Sinahuri, Randall Stevenson, Bob Weller, and Adrian Wilkinson from Conaga Minolta comprise the rest of our board of directors. A special thank you to this hardworking group who volunteer their time to direct the DIA on behalf of the membership. Thank you also to our members who have stayed with us and continue to support the DIA. We're very fortunate to have such a cohesive and enthusiastic following during these very difficult times. The board's objectives this year are to, one, increase benefits to members through the caliber of our meetings. We have seen attendance at our general meetings steadily increase and we will continue to create meetings which attract both current as well as new members to increase the value for our sponsors and increase sponsorship of the association, as well as to increase membership. At this point, I'd like to introduce our topic and panelists for today. The Print Summit, the DA Board's Christmas gift to the industry, a panel of pundits and prognosticators, including myself, the moderator today, Stephen Longmire, slide please, Paul, there we go. National sales manager, Sydney Stone, president of the Digital Imaging Association. Stephen just recently joined Sydney Stone in November of 2020, and I am the president of the DIA for this year. Yay! Yay! Our panelists today are Bob Kirk, Frank Romano, and Warren Rorbitz, our big fan there, the raving fan of print. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Bob Kirk, general manager of the Printing Equipment and Supply Dealers Association, also known as PESDA, Bob began his graphics career with Howard and Smith and Clark Lithography. Lithographing. He joined Kodak and for 20 plus years worked as a technical <clears throat> sales representative in both British Columbia and Alberta. 
He then came back to Toronto as a training coordinator, plate specialist, marketing director, graphics markets business unit manager. Uh, that's quite a mouthful there, Bob. Uh, <laughs> Bob's last years at Kodak were as a manager in distribution logistics, paper finishing, consumer markets, and human resources. Bob retired in 20, sorry, in 2000. Bob's best quote, all my years at Kodak and calling on professional photographers as well as graphics, and it comes down to standing against the wall with an iPhone for my photo. <laughs> <laughs> as well, we have Frank Romano. You're not going to read that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> who's who's a professor all of that. emeritus from Rochester Institute of Technology. <laughs> Obviously, everyone knows Frank. However, I'll still give a little brief background to those that are not as familiar. He is the School of Graphics Media, president of Friends of the Museum of Printing Incorporated, and as mentioned, Frank is an icon in the printing industry. He's the author of 66 books and eight publications and has contributed to the printing sections of the Encyclopedia Britannica, Encyclopedia Americana, World Book Encyclopedia, and McGraw Hill Encyclopedia of Science and Technology, as well as graphics arts terms for the Random House Directory. Most known Frank Romano as most known Frank Romano was the editor of the international paper Pocket Pal. He was the editor for 33 years, and his latest book is the 500-page History of Desktop Publishing. And last but not least is Warren Rubit, raving fan of print. When it comes to print communications, Warren likes to push boundaries, create traction, and imagine the unimaginable. For over 25 years, Warren has been immersing clients into a world in which their business or brand vibrates. Color obsessed, innovation fueled, and challenge driven. My unfiltered, positive, and famously exuberant approach to next level print communications has landed me on panels, boards, and conference bills across North America. Community minded and a real people person, his unbridled, I should say his, not mine, I'm reading in uh, for second person, his unbridled passion for what he, uh, what, it, what he comes down through in every channel, at every touch point, and with every partner. Warren's motto is let's print, let's play, and when that's done, let's go fishing. At this point, I'd like to turn today over to our panelists and open the floor for discussion. Oh, sorry, one housekeeping note. If any of our attendees would like to pose a question to any members of the panel, please submit the question. And if it's directed to a certain panelist, please indicate the panelist's name in the question. If not, I will pose the question to the panel as a whole. And you may be in. Uh, these uh, these cells are uh, that I'm going to review right now. Uh, we put together over a number of years. Years when I joined Coda, or PESD at least about 19 years ago. Uh, one of the directives that I was given was to find some background on the printing industry in Canada and North America, and put together some summary kind of report that we could all the members could benefit from seeing. So I've taken a few cells out of uh, each, some of the reports just to give you an update. Uh, and they're all trailing indicators on the printing industry in Canada. But it's kind of interesting information, and at least it provides a base because I'm not sure that there's any other organization that does this much work. All the data is st from Stats Canada. Um, most of the data that you see is a summary of, of, uh, of monthly uh, surveys that they do amongst the printers or the industry. And this first one uh, I thought was kind of interesting because it talks about where printing is done right across Canada and, by, and the population of the provinces. So you can see the blue is the population as a percentage of the, of the country. And the red is the percentage of printing that's done across in, in Ontario, for instance. And Ontario represents about 4.7% of a $9 billion industry. Uh, Quebec is $2.7 billion of the $9 billion. And Manitoba is about $500 million. But in all those three provinces, they do more printing per, po per, per, per population than they do in, in the rest of the provinces. So it's just infer in interesting information as to where the industry is. Now in the next slide, this is a summary of, and again, they're trailing, trailing indicators, but at least they do show trends. Uh, the right-hand side talks about the revenue uh, across the country and what the changes are year to year. And then we also put a statistical trend in there as well to see what the changes are. And, and the uh, change over three years is, uh, is very little, uh, but the change year to year from 2019 versus 18 
was about minus 3%. On the left-hand side, it, the different segments, there are six segments that Stats Canada does on NAICS, North American Industry Classification System. And the digital printing side of the business, which I think most people are interested in in this group, uh, last year, 19 versus 18, down 7%. But the three-year compound annual growth rate was up 11%. So that shows the change. And then we also provide the members on the lower part of that uh, one metric, uh, the, what the actual numbers were if they're interested in using those. We repeat the same thing for each province, but we're not going to do that today. It'd take too long. So I just wanted to present some of the trends that we do provide. The next one, next slide is on the printing and related support. So again, it's a $9 billion industry. Uh, the, the section that, that uh, the general section is 71% and that's the general commercial. And there are quite a few pieces in there, except, and there are six segments, uh, except on the right-hand side of the ones, you'll see the individual ones that uh, Stats Canada gathers information under, as well as of course the general commercial. But digital printing is 8.6% of the total and it's $786 million. Now, I should explain how they wind up in these sections. If you start off as a quick printer uh, and register with, uh, with uh, Revenue Canada or the industry, then you're always in that category, even though you might throw out the old AB Dicks and the, and the multis, and then are all digital. Uh, the business that you do within that framework will still be recorded that way. So it's not really a true representation of digital but it's the best that we can get locally. Next page is the comparison between Canada and the US. And what we did there is we took, the US breaks the NAICS down in some finer segments, but most of the match, except when you get it in, in our bigger bucket, which is the general commercial, uh, down in the US, it's, a, it's an 82, $82 billion business. In Canada, of course, it's $9.1 with business. But we applied the percentages from the US because they cover more of the NAICS sections and applied those to Canada. And although when you look at that chart, if you could see it closely, you'd see that the percentages are about the same, but there's a big, big difference in the dollars. Again, it would be digital that shows up as $768 million, but in the US digital printing is $7.4 million. But everybody in the NAICS, because it's North American Industry Classification System, the two countries use it the same way. So you can consider those buckets to be similar. Again, trailer indica trailing indicators, but at least some, at some basis. The next cell that we're gonna take a look at is the number of employees in the industry and, and also the number of printers that there are out there. Uh, the Stats Canada claims in 2019, there were 3,500 printers. In some, some uh, times you'll see it printed a much larger number than that. But Stats Canada only count, and it, what we only count is the people that have employees. So there's a whole group of people, it might be somebody like myself who when I start, first started doing this work for PES, I thought I had to have a business license and would license myself in the print, printing business. And yet I didn't have any employees or, or really any revenue out of it. So this just covers the, the industries that have more than one employee, one or more employee and doesn't cover the indeterminate ones, which is a category they have. So you can see we've dropped over four years, a couple of hundred businesses overall, uh, and about 9% of the employees. The next cell talks about the growth in digital, uh, which is again, part of the, the DIA background and so, but remember this just includes those people who set up their businesses to be in the digital but the, 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 the screen printers and so on, they're doing lots of digital printing, but it's not recorded in here. It would be recorded in the digital side of the, in, in the uh, silk screen side of the business. The next cell is, is a report that we put out monthly and it's just one of these, and this is the last one. Uh, and it shows the effect, I think, of COVID uh, overall, where in Canada, the general printing industry that we've looked at all the way through is down 15%. This is, this is uh, September data, but it's a, we issue it out in November. Stats Canada is about two months behind. Uh, so it's again, trailing information. And where digital shows is down 31%. Now at the same time, the US where we're down 15% overall, 
uh, in terms of, and these are dollar shipments. Uh, the U.S. is down just minus 2.6 percent. So their industry is much stronger, whether that's uh, from elections or what. There are a lot of people who know more about that than I do. But I wanted to just do an overview and a summary of some of the material that we provide to PESA members. We also uh, try to acquire as many reports as we can, and uh, we uh, summarize those at the same time. Sometimes I'll get, buy a report and it's 400 pages, and I'll try to get into you know, 20 metrics uh, because I want the visual impression of what's going on, on as long as the data, and I've got a pretty good idea of what our members are looking for in terms of content. So that's basically uh, some of the information that uh, PESDA provides to its members. Thank you. Frank, the floor is yours. Thank you all very much. Again, I can only talk about the United States, so it might give you some perspective of what's going on. Overall, we're down about five or 6% in the United States. If you look at the anecdotal information I've gotten over the course of the year, um, the printing industry actually has held its, its, its own pretty well. Uh, one of the things that's kept it going has been signage. I mean, how many of you have seen, you know, one of these? Uh, uh, thousands and thousands, well, probably millions of these things are being printed. I'm involved with the Museum of Printing, and I have all the signage I had to buy in order to meet all of the regulations for how people come to the museum and how they uh, distribute themselves around the museum. The thing that's helped the printing industry more than anything else was they moved into digital printing. I like the fact that they, the NAICS pulls out digital printing. I think it's more per pervasive than most people realize. I don't think the numbers that we're seeing from the government really tell us the true story. It's digital printing that has really saved the printing industry over this period of time. Um, it has helped us with almost every area of the industry. Uh, when the pandemic broke out, it allowed printers to very quickly get into uh, printing uh, not only signage, but masks, PPEs, and other materials necessary. Also, because people started buying through the mail, uh, through the internet, um, then you needed more packaging. That opened up another whole area uh, for many printing companies. Um, so the technology was there for them. And the trends are all very good right now for the way the industry is progressing. Although I have a feeling that most of us would like to wipe the year 2020 off of our memories and just go into 2021 and say 2020 never happened. But it's going to probably take a few months to get this vaccine out and to really get the industry back full time. Um, and I think that will happen. There's a pent up demand in the industry for the general kinds of printing that are out there. The technologies that are helping more than anything else really involve two things. We're starting to see a lot of four up or greater um, inkjet printers coming along. These are competing with your traditional sheet fed offset presses. Uh, we're also seeing a lot of activity with flatbed inkjet, the ability to print on anything, whether it's plastic or metal or glass or wood or whatever it may be, which is opening up new markets for a lot of uh, printing companies at this stage of the game. We've also seen a resurgence of variable data printing, something that got a lot of hype a few years ago and sort of got quietly went away. Well, it's been, around, been out there, and now many companies looking for sort of contacting customers and creating relationships, uh, they, they've been resorting now to variable data printing, which digital printing is the only real way to do it. And so that, that's been advancing very nicely. Uh, the book industry is doing phenomenally well. There are 27 books about Trump alone. Uh, <laughs> And some people are issuing now additional additions to them, and they're all selling millions of copies. So as a result, the book industry is doing phenomenally well. Uh, between Canada and the U.S., most of them are being printed here, thank goodness. Um, but uh, again, I don't know what's going to happen with the book industry as we go into 2021. Uh, we may not have that kind of, of need to print that many books uh, on that subject. Um, as I said, signage is doing extremely well. Um, packaging, of course, will always do well. There's just no way to ship a box of Wheaties over the internet at this stage of the game. Um, printers I talk to are very optimistic. The biggest problem they're having right now is skilled labor for some of their older equipment. Many printers, as you know, have printing presses that are 20 years old or more. And the people that run them are prized possessions in that company. And that's going to be our issue as we go forward. 
where will we find operators for all this older equipment? And if you buy a new press or a new digital machine, you know that there's a lot of automation in there and it can be run by, you know, basically trained people. Um, and the automation takes over a lot. Um, what's going to happen with the older equipment is we're going to run out of those kinds of operators. And that's going to be something that we're going to have to face as we move forward. I mean, many printers compete very well because their equipment is already paid for. And the reason it's paid for is it's really old. Um, however, we, we're going to have to move forward somehow. And as we get into new equipment, I think more printers are going to go toward digital than toward offset. Uh, gravure, we've seen major declines in gravure because the kinds of runs that required the millions uh, are not there anymore. They're there in packaging and some other areas, but they're not there for everything. Flexo is holding its own, but as soon as we figure out how to do it efficiently, uh, that is to print on film with digital, whether it's toner or inkjet, I don't care. Um, that's going to open up that whole marketplace to digital. And then we're going to see a decline in analog flexo at that point in time. Um, automation is also taking its toll. Printing companies are now using robotics. Uh, they're using apps. Uh, customers can connect electronically. When I do any printing now, I make a PDF file. I send it to a printer. And the only thing physically that has to be done in terms of me, is someone has to deliver it or pick it up. Um, so major change, when you get into the plant, by the way, total automation and everything that we're doing. And that's, that's saving the printing industry at this stage of the game. So I'm pretty optimistic that the printing industry, Canada and the United States is going to do relatively well in 2021. I think it will come back full time at the end of, toward the end of 2021, and then we'll move forward from there. But the fact that we've held our own during this pandemic is a testament to the printing industry and the people in the printing industry. And that's it for me. Thanks very, thanks very much. Warren, over to you. Hey, well, so first of all, I just want to say, I don't think print is ever going anywhere. Um, it changes all the time. We break it down into categories and digital and large format and packaging and all that other stuff. To me, it's print. Ink, paper, film, call it what you want. It's print. Bottom line is without us, nobody's selling anything. So I think we always have to remember the importance of the place that we have in this society. Um, second thing I think about, especially in the last uh, six, seven, eight, nine months, there's a lot of people in our industry who have been negative, uh, down on the industry, never anything positive, no solutions, no ideas. To those people, get the hell out already. Uh, we're having a hard enough time as it is that we don't need those downers. Um, I think we should just stick with the people that are positive, uh, because we do what we do and it's a, it's a great, uh, thing and everyone needs us. Uh, over the last nine months, uh, first of all, thank God for PPE because we've watched people pivot and change immediately. And that was good for two or three months until overseas was able to get back in it and come back with pricing because pricing today, regardless of what we think is really important. Um, one thing I, uh, one thing, another thing that I've noticed since this started is there was a lot of print companies in our industry that were working to be current, that were up to date, web to print, automation, all kinds of new software. Uh, those folks have a great running start uh, and an advantage. To the people before that were dragging their feet on what do we change, what do we do, do we update, do we upgrade? Uh, I feel for those people because their challenges are gonna be a little harder now uh, as it's harder to find people, as it might be harder for a lot of people to come up with financial resources in this time. Um, but those people are the ones that are going to lag behind because they're the farthest behind without having any of the modern um, uh, uh, abilities to push things forward because the only way to be successful today is to minimize the touch points that you have in your business. Um, the other thing is uh, when I look at what markets are good and what markets are bad, I look a little differently. I look to the companies that are successful and to see what they're doing because there are always successful companies uh, in all times. And while we're living this, I'll call it a nightmare, there are still companies that are holding their own and uh, doing things right. And I think we could learn from them. There is no time to be negative and down. Uh, we need to band together and stick together because we will overcome this. I mean, people need us. Absolutely. 
Um, I have a question here that was posed by one of our attendees. This is directed to Bob directly. Um, the question was, Bob, there was, was there no packaging included in the first batch of stats? And if not, uh, the possible industry could be much larger than the $9 billion. Um, I've been trying to get uh, st packaging information out of Stats Canada that would be meaningful, and I haven't had any luck. I recently wrote to the ch chief statistician of uh, Stats Canada, which I do every couple of years to thank them for the good work they do in providing data on the printing industry and to let the people know what uh, what it's used for and how it's used. So I send them a copy of our reports. And uh, he drew, you know, worked down in his organization and uh, at different levels and they came back and there was really nothing that, that I, it could put together that would make any sense. Uh, both myself and, and for the person that does our metrics, we both looked at it pretty seriously and we couldn't find anything that we could put together that would be similar uh, to what they have. They, they have a lot of individual items and, and uh, things, but they don't have any sort of process things in there that we, could, that we could look at. So the best we can do is if, when companies put out reports, and, and some of them do, um, what they think puts out reports from time to time, there aren't as many as there used to be. Uh, Premier puts out reports as to gather those and, and uh, to see whether or not there's information in there and the trends, but Stats Canada doesn't have anything in our estimation that, uh, that would be worthwhile producing and would be of value to the members. Perfect, thanks Bob. Uh, I have a question as well to the panel as a whole. Uh, during this pandemic, what are some of the most innovative ideas you've seen companies implement? I know both Frank and Warren have talked about the production PPE uh, for printers, pivoting to physical distancing floor graphics or wall signage, as well as uh, also physical barriers uh, in terms of the clear acrylic uh, screens for reception areas. Are there other uh, examples you see that were kind of very innovative in terms of this uh, sort of business Darwinism time? I think, it, I mean, you can't really beat it to death, but I think really that's what it came down to. There was people doing printed masks. They were a lot of people doing the acrylic shields. Um, the floor graphics came up. Um, I think that was all your basic stuff. Some were coming out with some sprays or working with some chemical companies to offer sprays or sanitizers in their packages as well. Uh, I think the companies that went quickly went online to offer those uh, products did um, much better than those that didn't. And I think that was, I think it was a two, three month window where you were able to actually uh, get ahead with that. I think printers that used online marketing really did very well. They really were able to implement new approaches that traditionally printers hadn't used. And as a result, they were able to sell a lot of this stuff um, over the internet. And that's really the key to marketing today. Absolutely. Um, next question would be, if you could change just one thing about the industry in its current state, aside from obviously this global pandemic, uh, what would it be? <laughs> I think we need more information. You know, in the United States, we used to have 51 different magazines for the printing industry. Today, we barely have three or four. And, uh, you know, and we have a few websites. But I think there's a lack of information that's really hitting the industry to tell us what's really happening out there from a technological point of view, a marketing point of view, and a data point of view. There are all these little pieces that many of us, Warren and I, have to dig around to find. There's no one place where you can go to find everything you need. I doubt if there ever will be. But I think there's still a lack of general information to help the printing company uh, move forward. So to go along with that, I think that there's a lack of interest from a lot of print companies out there for information. Uh, I, don't think, I think a lot of these companies don't realize that the information that's out there are game changers within their business and their thoughts and their planning and their wondering. Um, the old days of build it and they will come, those days are over. Um, they don't exist anymore. I think there's a lot of good business to be had. Uh, if I have to look at the industry and think of something that I think could be improved, uh, number one is the knowledge of the people that are running these businesses. And more importantly, I would like the owners of these businesses to better understand the cost of their business because I find that it's a race to the bottom line right now out there. And a lot of people with the same equipment, the prices are varying it's too big a difference considering nobody's paying for the equipment up front. Um, but we are in, I can't stress enough to everyone every day, we are in a service business. We are allowed to make money. We are allowed to have margin. We are in a capital intensive business 
that requires all of that. And we need some money left over to pay our reps and all the staff. So um, I'm just, you know, I'm tired of hearing about the price, the price. Everybody go out and make some real money. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the next point it actually is not really a question per se, but something I've noticed uh, in my previous incarnation uh, as the associate publisher of Print Action, I was there over 13 years. During this time, I noticed before my departure from March onwards, there were some companies that everything got quiet, but there were some very innovative companies that did a lot of research, pivoted their entire business and sometimes in a different way, and invested heavily in a big capital expenditure of equipment to go into a different market because they had the time to really dig down through all the data that they'd acquired and didn't necessarily have that time uh, going forward when business was usual and things were running. So just an observation I had. I saw some very unique, very big capital equipment acquisitions between like the May to May to August timeframe. And were they successful? They seem to be, uh, or at least they're growing a whole different business unit within a company that was existing as it was before, but now it's a different arm of it. It's, it's collaborative in the sense, but it's also going to take a different skill of salesperson uh, t- to actualize that. But it's, it's pretty interesting what I saw there. Some of them have made, been made public. Some of them weren't. So it was pretty interesting to see. I found it, I found it encouraging that people were still acquiring capital equipment and they were actually looking at growing their business in a different direction too. Kind of to warn well, business, business as usual is business as usual. But I, I also think for some companies, because they, of the position they were in at the time of the pandemic, uh, are in a different position to take advantage of some opportunity. <laughs> if before the pandemic you were into your line of credit, funds were tight, and you were having a difficult time, um, you aren't able to do anything now. If you weren't using your line before, if you had some cash in the bank, if you had the opportunity with the government to take advantage of some of the subsidies and manage your cash, then you're in a way better position to try something new with research and data, of course. And you're in an amazing position to negotiate with the manufacturers because they're all choking right now, regardless of what they tell us. Uh, They're not selling enough equipment. So timing could be right for certain people. Mm-hmm. In fact, this is a great time to buy equipment because most of the big trade shows are not running. So all those expenses are not being expended by the companies. So deals are, are out there. And so if you need to buy anything new, whether it's an offset press or a digital press or bindery equipment, now is the best time to do it. Exactly. And now is actually a great time to look at automated options within those sectors, especially now with physical distancing need to be required within printing facilities for them to run right now. If you're going to automate and you can decrease some people, especially in like a finishing department, which traditionally would have a lot of people and not a lot of automation per se. Now, if you can automate that aspect, you can actually physically remove some people from close confines too. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of robotics being applied in the finishing area. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I also think, uh, I also think now is a good time for people that are reflecting on their businesses um, to look around and we're not, we're not in an industry where people like to talk a lot. Everyone tries to be secretive, although there are no secrets. Um, but now's a good time if you're looking at your business to maybe call your neighbor who's also looking at his business to have a good conversation about how can you take things together, maybe put, maybe do something where at the end of the day, two parties can come out ahead instead of two parties struggling. I think the days of ego are gone, right? Uh, I think there's a lot of people that could help people. There's trade shops. There's um, if you can't afford to buy everything. So, you know, I'd like to put out there to people, if anybody's looking to team up with someone, give me a call. I'd love to help you. It's not about making money. It's about strengthening what we do and making and filling the capacity. That's a good point. And do you think post pandemic, there might be another batch of kind of mergers and acquisitions that we saw sort of similar to the 2009? Um, I'm going to say mergers, acquisitions, and companies closing. Mm -hmm. When the wage subsidy, I've been talking to a lot of people in a lot of different business. And unfortunately, the wage subsidies have helped people get through this. When that stops, it's going to be really hard to say where people are within whatever business they're in and where it stands. Right. You could be in printing, but if your if your market was retail, right, because that large format was retail was huge. Where's that today? It's going to take us months until we see where that, um, you know, wraps up a little better. Mm -hmm. What people are going to do. I think that the very big printing companies, the really gigantic ones, are going to start divesting themselves of divisions. We've already seen this with Quad 
divesting themselves of their quick printing operation for, uh, for books on demand. And that was bought by somebody else who started to get into that business. And a lot of the Donnelly divisions that now are being commercialized. Uh, so my feeling is that the, the large companies are trying to streamline themselves. And as a result, it will result in new printing companies as such uh, moving forward. Oh, that's optimistic. Excellent. Uh, another question that we have here. Um, well, uh, what technology, in your opinion, Frank, you touched on a little bit previously, will have the biggest impact on our industry moving forward from this? If it could be robotics, Frank, automation. You can answer that one. What would it be? You don't want to give a shot at it, Warren? I'm just going to say any software related to automation that takes the personal touch out of things, right? Minimizes the error. That's where it's at. In terms well, of an upfront, like a web to print portal, Warren? Or? Uh, could be uh, web to print, could be the software in your company, could be the equipment that you're using, mm -hmm. right? Everything to be, I mean, we had something similar a bunch of years ago. It didn't really go that far, but that whole JDF thing was about making everything compatible to talk and making it easier. So now I think it's just a step up to the plate. Um, one company's, the robotics has already started a long time ago. You could put robotics at the end of your line and you could pack 40 pallets exactly the same way with no delay, no sick days and nothing falling off. Right. Um, so every, everything anywhere, <clears throat> and I'm not, I'm not, that's, I'm, I'm for it because I think it's important. I'm not, I'm not there to take away jobs. So we're going to have to train people to learn different skill sets to go along with that. Yeah, but I think it is about labor. And that is we're looking for technologies that really cut labor and make things more efficient. It goes way beyond software. Of course, if you want to think about robotics, you go back to 1993 when Komori introduced automatic plate loading. Mm. I mean, that was revolutionary at, at, at its time. Um, but I think that the major area that we have to start looking at is printing on things beyond paper. If you look at the statistics, the volume of paper that is used for printing keeps going down every month. When you look at the uh, American Paper and Pulp Association and what they're reporting is the volume of paper is going down, which means that what are printers printing on if they're not printing on paper? So they're going to have to learn how to print on other materials and open up new markets. Now, many of them are already printing on plastics very well, but there are other markets beyond that. And I think that flatbed inkjet and other technologies are going to really open up that market. I think that's going to be the next big thing for printers in order to open up their markets beyond traditional paper-based printing. That's a fair point. I've almost, and I said sort of for years almost, that printers, rather than just thinking of themselves as printers per se, should think about themselves as print manufacturers. And then the substrate really doesn't matter. It's the process to put ink or toner or what have you onto almost any surface or item. So. Absolutely. I like to think I like to think of us as print communication specialists because regardless of the type of media that print is going on, everything is being used to communicate with a customer at some level to either help them, assist them, or sell them. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, let's see. I just uh, have a question here from one of the attendees as well. Uh, to Frank specifically, are there U.S. stats on packaging, Frank, that you've currently seen or had access to? Yes, and they're all going through the roof. <laughs> Everything that's happening in packaging is growing exponentially, mostly because of the way we now buy things. It's, it's really over the internet. Um, I mean, I, I'm sitting in a room right now and I can see the street and in, in the last uh, 30 minutes, uh, several FedEx trucks and UPS trucks have passed by. <laughs> so they're all delivering something. Exactly. I'm, I'm at a court as well. And basically it's a racetrack all day of all the different ones, UPS, FedEx, everything. So who wins, yeah. who wins? Exactly. Perfect. Um, there's another uh, question that was posed both to Frank and Warren here. Uh, your opinions right now on digital print embellishment, foil, spot UVs, et cetera. Where do you think it fits right now? And should printers be focusing on this right now in the pandemic and where print buyers might be, might be shrinking their budgets? This is a great question, by the way, and I'm glad they brought it up. Digital embellish embellishment is, is really a big thing. It's been growing over the last few years, but now it's starting to get into real stride. Um, whenever you can make a printed piece look more valuable, people will pay a premium for it. And so this is one of the ways that printers can make money. 
And so most of the major manufacturers now are introducing inkjet systems that can give you the metallics, the texture, um, many laser die cutting is now available. So all of these new effects are creating beautiful, beautiful printing. And if you look at the award winners uh, in most of the printing competitions that I've seen in the United States, most of the winners have some level of digital embellishment. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think, uh, I think uh, it really enhances product, but I think as the print company, you have to just be aware and be smart of who you are, where you are and who your cl clients are. If you're a small company selling a million dollars a year and it's all small copy and stuff, unless you properly educate yourself, you're going to go buy a machine. It's not going to work for you. Um, and I really got to stress that to everyone. You have to know what you're doing and who your clients are first, but there are huge demands out there for the clients, for agencies. I have a friend uh, down in the South who um, does a lot of silver and gold, all for nonprofit. And you would think, why would they want it? Because they're looking to cut costs and not spend as much money. But they're found, they found, since they're using all these embellishments in the foil, they're getting a better reaction. People are looking, people are liking what they see, people are responding. So definite yes, but you need to do your homework. Yeah, the tactile nature of an enhanced printed piece tends to make people hold on to it longer. So instead of it being a cursory look, it'll be a look, touch, feel, and you sort of remember that it's triggered more to an actual multi-sensory well, process. I, I, I could tell you, I remember when we had installed, you know, way back our, our 56 inch UV at the time, and we were doing uh, scented pieces and plastics and, and even some textured stuff on there, we'd be sitting at a meeting with the client and we'd give the samples and just throughout the whole meeting, you could just watch their hands. They're just, they're ooing, they're awing. They're, it's like, I swear it's like print porn. There's nothing more exciting than watch someone take their hand over something and their face like change colors and smile. And it's all about emotion print. That's what the embellishments do. Yeah. And the nice thing about that too, is you can do versioning and shorter runs and boutique packaging because you're not having to do larger runs as well. Perfect. I have another question here, which has been posed, given both of your experiences and Bob, if you wanted to weigh into kind of from a, a larger kind of overview uh, perspective, if you were a new owner of a general commercial print shop today, what areas would you concentrate on most and what would you steer away from? Okay. When you say new, do you mean someone coming into the business and setting up a commercial shop? Because it's him, I would say, or her, get the hell out. Bad timing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, if it's someone from within, it, it really comes down to your particular market because there's a lot of people who suggest a lot of things to sell or where, where print is at, but it's not the same in every market. So if we're talking in general, wherever you are, you have to scope out and analyze your market to see what it is that you could do. Uh, I know companies now that are 80% commercial and they're doing okay with it. <clears throat> and then there's other companies that are 100% digital and they're doing okay. And then there's a lot of companies that do a lot of both and they're all not doing okay. <laughs> right? So you all, my belief always when I was selling was I didn't look to what was going on around me. I focused on what we were doing and who we wanted to go and build our own relations and, and our presentations that way. And Frank? And well, Bob? Again, I would look at the industry a little bit differently. Because the one thing we have to understand is that the thing that affected the printing industry more than anything else was the internet and the fact that things could go digital. A lot of the printing we lost over the last 20 years went digital. And so what you want to do is analyze your business and look at those products that you're producing because someday those products could disappear. They could go electronic. And I think I would look at it differently than others, not look at new markets. Well, you always have to look at new markets, but really look at the things I'm doing now that could be affected. Because what happens with printers, they're so optimistic that because they're doing some printed product like forms, they think that that product's gonna go on forever. And then all of a sudden technology comes in like PDF and all of a sudden Oof. an entire market disappears. So, so be very careful. I still have this feeling that someday far into the future, uh, the printing industry is going to band together, um, build a Terminator, and send them back in time to kill the guy who invented the internet. Because really, <laughs> if you think about it, that's what affected the printing industry more than anything else, was the fact that things that we were printing went electronic. 
I guess, yeah, definitely a good point. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I could add to that going back in, in my history of work and so on was is knowing your customer base and, and seeing if there's something else you can do for them. You've, got a, you've already got a good relationship with those people. And, and it could be anything as simple as kidding uh, where they do some promotional item and they're looking for people to put the, the, the components of that together. Uh, but once you've got a relationship with a, with a large company and, and them. Okay. I think we lost you, Bob, there for a sec. Um, had a question come through actually that was just texted um, for Warren and Frank. What, what technology would you put into your dream printing shop? How would you kit out a dream print shop if you had to just bespoke it how you wished? I don't have enough money. <laughs> if money was no object, it says basically. What oh my God, if money was shop? no object, I would want a new updated UV press. I'd want a Lambda press. I'd want the latest in inkjet, the latest digital, just because I'm a gadget. The best folders, everything that you push a button and it goes. Oh, I mean, and that's a, a loaded question. That's uh, yeah. And there was a bit of a follow-up. It said, and what sector would you pick? So would you go with the show? Would you pick? What would you pick? Mm. That's a tough question. It really depends on the company. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a lot of interesting new technologies coming along. The Lambda product is fantastic. But really, it's the ink that he uses that is the key. And his current machine is fantastic. But what they can do with that ink goes beyond that machine. Uh, Landa, Landa was always about the ink that he could make for the Indigo and for this press, right? He's a consumable guy, but it's I spectacular. Their, I was in their laboratory in Israel and, and saw some of the things they can do with that ink that go beyond traditional printing. I think that may be where the, where the future is. So the best thing to do is to stay in touch as much as possible with the real innovators in this industry. Agreed. Yeah, because theoretically with the nonography, you can even get into printable electronics and circuit boards and things like that with conductive inks and all sorts of things. It's pretty interesting. And this is not to say that the, our, our, our traditional manufacturers are not doing the same thing, by the way. Of course. Sure. Um, the thing we're missing uh, this year and maybe a good part of next year are the trade shows where a lot of this technology and experimental technology would have been shown. So we missed out on Drupa. We missed out on the American Print Show. Uh, we missed on the Canadian show. The, we would have had opportunities where companies would have brought some of this experimental technology to gauge how people reacted, and we missed that opportunity. Yeah, which is unfortunate. Maybe there'll be that much more now when we finally are able to safely meet again. <laughs> when we meet again, we exactly. will be meeting again. Yeah, I said when we, say, when we can safely meet again. So um, I have a question to you. What, uh, what areas do you see AI and robotics moving into the printing sector? I think mostly finishing. That, that's where you had the largest group of, most printers hire part-time people to come in and take all the stuff from the skids, from the presses, and put it into the pockets of the bindery systems, and then load the, the pallets, and then load the trucks. A lot of that now is moving toward robotics more than anything else. Perfect. Warren, your, uh, your opinion? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I kind of go along with, uh, with uh, Frank a little bit. It's a little bit, I'm not really sure, 100%. Yeah. yeah in terms of physical automation, absolutely, like finishing. Uh, in terms of like AI, obviously like uh, web to print portals, moving right through the whole workflow, color management, all of that, AI as well. Um, yeah. and, and it all has to be affordable. But you know, right. haven't we gotten color management under control. I don't understand. Yes. I mean, it's been oh, 20 or 30 years. By the way, I want to discuss color management because I was just talking to someone about color and all these certifications. And my experience is, aside from a few brands like Coca-Cola and Quaker Oats, most customers are not that serious about the color these days. Mm. And I don't care what anyone else says because you're using yellow paper, you're looking for the cheapest paper, people aren't coming on press anymore, PDF proofs. Uh, all you need is one sheet to give the customer and then the jobs. I think there's more eye pleasing color today than any other than ever before. Especially with expanded gamut. So. Well, it's also gang runs and price. It's uh, you still get the best job when you run it one up by itself the way it should be. So printers should offer courses on color certification because that's where the money is right now. Yep. There you go. Let's just take one more poll of our, uh, our online attendees to see if there's any more questions that they'd like to submit to our panel today. 
and I don't see any more coming through. Well, at this point, I think we finished just a little bit early, which is great. We covered a lot of topics. I'd like to thank uh, thank Bob, thank Frank, and thank Warren very much for your insights and your opinions. Do you have anything, any of the three of you would like to follow up kind of in a closing statement, starting with Bob? Oh, just, just in print lives, if you're negative, sorry, I don't know who started, but if print lives and if you're negative, like I said before, just get out, leave us alone. <laughs> well, more power to you all, by the way. I was there when DIA was formed a million years ago, and it's great to see that you're still running and, and you have the involvement of great people and great companies. So please keep, keep doing what you're doing. Oh, thanks so much, Ray. And Bob as well, any closing statements? Well, the only th the thing that I found interesting when I saw who the, the sponsors were, uh, your sponsors and so on, seven out of the nine sponsors are PESDA members. Uh, so the supplier industry is uh, is standing forward to uh, help the different associations, and that's good news. Absolutely, absolutely. It allows us to share this information with the with the sector as a whole. So we do appreciate their uh, uh, their support. And on that note, I'd very much like to thank our our platinum sponsors, our gold sponsors. I'm just going to let, there we go, Platinum, Canon, EFI, HP, Conquin, Ulta, and Spicers, our gold sponsors, Adobe, Fujifilm, Graphics Canada, and Heidelberg. And I'd like to thank HP for providing the technology for this webinar today. Thank everyone for joining us today. We hope you found it educational and fun. I know I did. We value your feedback and we'll be sending out a survey shortly. We'd appreciate your response. Your responses will help us shape our seminar, our webinars moving forward. Our next webinar will be on Wednesday, January the 20th, 2021. Hopefully, new year, new, new day. Because our panelists today have given so generously of their time and knowledge, the DIA is going to be making a donation to the Canadian Print Scholarship Fund in their honor. Cool. Thank you. My pleasure. It's our By pleasure. By the way, I should mention one thing. You have in Canada one of the great treasures, Howard Ironworks in Oakville. Yes. They are doing a phenomenal job preserving the, the past of our industry and you guys should support them every way you can. It's fantastic. We actually hosted an event there, Frank, uh, before Brilliant, the work he does with the entire machine shop, rebuilding from scratch, sandblasting the whole way back up. It, they're actual works of art. They're not just even, they're functioning printing presses, but they're actual works of art. They're brilliant. They are. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, on behalf of the Digital Imaging Association Board, I'd like to wish all of you a safe and happy holiday season. Merry Christmas and a very prosperous and healthy new year. Thank you so Thank much, you. everyone. Thank Cheers. you. Bye-bye.